Section 16 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 6 Of Soups and Broths To make strong broth for soup or gravy. Take a shin of beef, a knuckle of veal, and a scrag of mutton. Put them in five gallons of water. Then let it boil up skim it clean and season it with six large onions four good leeks four heads of celery two carrots two turnips a bundle of sweet herbs six cloves a dozen corns of allspice and some salt skim it very clean and let it stew gently for six hours then strain it off and put it by for use when you want very strong gravy take a slice of bacon lay it in a stew pan take a pound of beef cut it thin lay it on the bacon slice a good piece of carrot in an onion sliced a good crust of bread a few sweet herbs a little mace cloves nutmeg and whole pepper an anchovy cover it and set it on a slow fire five or six minutes and pour in a quart of the above gravy cover it close and let it boil softly till half is wasted this will be a rich high brown sauce for fish fowl or ragu gravy for white sauce take a pound of any part of the veal cut it into small pieces boil it in a quart of water with an onion a blade of mace two cloves and a few whole peppercorns boil it till it is as rich as you would have it gravy for turkey fowl or ragu take a pound of lean beef cut and hack it well then flour it well put a piece of butter as big as a hen's egg in a stew pan when it is melted put in your beef fry it on all sides a little brown then pour in three pints of boiling water and a bundle of sweet herbs two or three blades of mace three or four cloves twelve whole peppercorns a little bit of carrot a little piece of crust of bread toasted brown cover it close and let it boil till there is about a pint or less season it with salt and strain it off gravy for a fowl when you have no meat nor gravy ready take the neck liver and gizzard boil them in half a pint of water with a little piece of bread toasted brown a little pepper and salt and a little bit of thyme let them boil till there is about a quarter of a pint then pour in half a glass of red wine boil it and strain it then bruise the liver well in and strain it again thicken it with a little piece of butter rolled in flour and it will be very good an ox's kidney makes good gravy cut all to pieces and boiled with spice etc as in the foregoing receipts you have a receipt in the beginning of the book in the preface for gravies vermicelli soup take three quarts of the broth and one of the gravy mixed together a quarter of a pound of vermicelli blanched in two quarts of water put it into the soup boil it up for ten minutes and season with salt if it wants any put it in your tureen with a crust of french roll baked macaroni soup take three quarts of the strong broth and one of the gravy mixed together take half a pound of small pipe macaroni and boil it in three quarts of water with a little butter in it till it is tender then strain it through a sieve cut it in pieces of about two inches long put it in your soup and boil it up for ten minutes and then send it to table in a tureen with the crust of a french roll toasted soup cressu take a pound of lean ham and cut it into small bits and put at the bottom of a stew pan then cut a french roll and put over the ham take two dozen heads of celery cut small six onions two turnips one carrot cut and washed very clean six cloves 
four blades of mace two handfuls of watercresses put them all into the stew pan with a pint of good broth cover them close and sweat it gently for twenty minutes then fill it up with veal broth and stew it four hours rub it through a fine sieve or cloth put it in your pan again season it with salt and a little cayenne pepper give it a simmer up and send it to table hot with some french roll toasted hard in it boil a handful of cresses till tender in water and put in over the bread to make mutton or veal gravy cut and hack your veal well set it on the fire with water sweet herbs mace and pepper let it boil till it is as good as you would have it then strain it off your fine cooks always if they can chop a partridge or two and put into gravies to make a strong fish gravy take two or three eels or any fish you have skin or scale them gut them and wash them from grit cut them into little pieces put them into a saucepan cover them with water a little crust of bread toasted brown a blade or two of mace and some whole pepper a few sweet herbs and a very little bit of lemon peel let it boil till it is rich and good then have ready a piece of butter according to your gravy if a pint as big as a walnut melt it in the saucepan then shake in a little flour and toss it about till it is brown and then strain in the gravy to it let it boil a few minutes and it will be good to make plum porridge for christmas take a leg and shin of beef put them into eight gallons of water and boil them till they are very tender and when the broth is strong strain it out wipe the pot and put in the broth again then slice six penny loaves thin cut off the top and bottom put some of the liquor to it cover it up and let it stand a quarter of an hour boil it and strain it and then put it into your pot let it boil a quarter of an hour then put in five pounds of currants clean washed and picked let them boil a little and put in five pounds of raisins of the sun stoned and two pounds of prunes and let them boil till they swell then put in three quarters of an ounce of mace half an ounce of cloves two nutmegs all of them beat fine and mix it with a little liquor cold and put them in a very little while and take off the pot then put in three pounds of sugar a little salt a quart of sack a quart of claret and the juice of two or three lemons you may thicken with sago instead of bread if you please pour them into earthen pans and keep them for use to make strong broth to keep for use take part of a leg of beef and the scrag end of a neck of mutton break the bones in pieces and put to it as much water as will cover it and a little salt and when it boils skim it clean and put into it a whole onion stuck with cloves a bunch of sweet herbs some pepper and a nutmeg quartered let these boil till the meat is boiled in pieces and the strength boiled out of it strain it out and keep it for use a crawfish soup take a gallon of water and set it a boiling put in it a bunch of sweet herbs three or four blades of mace an onion stuck with cloves pepper and salt then have about two hundred crawfish save about twenty then pick the rest from the shells save the tails whole beat the body and shells in a mortar with a pint of peas green or dry first boiled tender in fair water put your boiling water to it and strain it boiling hot through a cloth till you have all the goodness out of it set it over a slow fire or stew hole have ready a french roll cut very thin and let it be very dry put it to your soup let it stew till half is wasted 
then put a piece of butter as big as an egg into a saucepan let it simmer till it has done making a noise shake in two teaspoonfuls of flour stirring it about and an onion put in the tails of the fish give them a shake round put to them a pint of good gravy let it boil four or five minutes softly take out the onion and put to it a pint of the soup stir it well together bruise the live spawn of a hen lobster and put it all together and let it simmer very softly a quarter of an hour fry a french roll very nice and brown and the twenty crawfish pour your soup into the dish and lay the roll in the middle and the crawfish round the dish fine cooks boil a brace of carp and tench and maybe a lobster or two and many more rich things to make a crawfish soup but the above is full as good and wants no addition to make soup santé or gravy soup take six good rashers of lean ham put it in the bottom of a stew pan then put over it three pounds of lean beef and over the beef three pounds of lean veal six onions cut in slices two carrots and two turnips sliced two heads of celery and a bundle of sweet herbs six cloves and two blades of mace put a little water at the bottom draw it very gently till it sticks then put in a gallon of boiling water let it stew for two hours season with salt and strain it off then have ready a carrot cut in small slices of two inches long and about as thick as a goose quill a turnip two heads of leeks two heads of celery two heads of endive cut across two cabbage lettuces cut across a very little sorrel and chervil put them in a stew pan and sweat them for fifteen minutes gently then put them in your soup boil it up gently for ten minutes put it in your tureen with a crust of french roll note well you may boil the herbs in two quarts of water for ten minutes if you like them best so your soup will be the clearer or you may take one quart of the broth from page one hundred and twenty five and one of the fowling gravy and boil the herbs that are cut fine in it for a quarter of an hour a green peas soup take a knuckle of veal and one pound of lean ham cut them in thin slices lay the ham at the bottom of a soup pot the veal upon the ham then cut six onions in slices and put on two or three turnips two carrots three heads of celery cut small a little thyme four cloves and four blades of mace put a little water at the bottom cover the pot close and draw it gently but do not let it stick then put in six quarts of boiling water let it stew gently for four hours and skim it well take two quarts of green peas and stew them in some of the broth till tender then strain them off and put them in a marble mortar and beat them fine put the liquor in and mix them up if you have no mortar you must bruise them in the best manner you can take a tammy or a fine cloth and rub them through till you have rubbed all the pulp out and then put your soup in a clean pot with half a pint of spinach juice and boil it up for fifteen minutes season with salt and a little pepper if your soup is not thick enough take the crumb of a french roll and boil it in a little of the soup beat it in the mortar and rub it through your tammy or cloth then put it in your soup and boil it up then put it in your tureen with dice of bread toasted very hard another way to make green peas soup take a gallon of water make it boil then put in six onions four turnips two carrots and two heads of celery cut in slices four cloves four blades of mace four cabbage lettuces cut small stew them for an hour then strain it off and put in two quarts of old green peas and boil them in the liquor till tender 
then beat or bruise them and mix them up with the broth and rub them through a tammy or cloth and put it in a clean pot with half a pint of spinach juice and boil it up fifteen minutes season with pepper and salt to your liking then put your soup in your tureen with small dices of bread toasted very hard a peas soup for winter take about four pounds of lean beef cut it in small pieces about a pound of lean bacon or pickled pork set it on the fire with two gallons of water let it boil and skim it well then put in six onions two turnips one carrot and four heads of celery cut small and put in a quart of split peas boil it gently for three hours then strain them through a sieve and rub the peas well through then put your soup in a clean pot and put in some dried mint rubbed very fine to powder cut the white of four heads of celery and two turnips in dices and boil them in a quart of water for fifteen minutes then strain them off and put them in your soup take about a dozen small rashers of bacon fried and put them into your soup season with pepper and salt to your liking boil it up for fifteen minutes then put it in your tureen with dices of bread fried very crisp another way to make it when you boil a leg of pork or a good piece of beef save the liquor when it is cold take off the fat the next day boil a leg of mutton save the liquor and when it is cold take off the fat set it on the fire with two quarts of peas let them boil till they are tender then put in the pork or beef liquor with the ingredients as above and let it boil till it is as thick as you would have it allowing for the boiling again then strain it off and add the ingredients as above you may make your soup of veal or mutton gravy if you please that is according to your fancy a chestnut soup take half a hundred of chestnuts pick them put them in an earthen pan and set them in the oven half an hour or roast them gently over a slow fire but take care they do not burn then peel them and set them to stew in a quart of good beef veal or mutton broth till they are quite tender in the meantime take a piece or slice of ham or bacon a pound of veal a pigeon beat to pieces a bundle of sweet herbs an onion a little pepper and mace and a piece of carrot lay the bacon at the bottom of a stew pan and lay the meat and ingredients at top set it over a slow fire till it begins to stick to the pan then put in a crust of bread and pour in two quarts of broth let it boil softly till one third is wasted then strain it off and add it to the chestnuts season it with salt and let it boil till it is well tasted stew two pigeons in it and fry a french roll crisp lay the roll in the middle of the dish and the pigeons on each side pour in the soup and send it away hot hare soup take and cut a large hare into pieces and put it into an earthen mug with three blades of mace two large onions a little salt a red herring half a dozen large morels a pint of red wine and three quarts of water bake it three hours in a quick oven and then strain it into a stew pan have ready boiled four ounces of french barley and put in just scald the liver and rub it through a sieve with a wooden spoon put it into the soup set it over the fire and keep it stirring but it must not boil send it up with crisp bread in it soup a la reine take a pound of lean ham and cut it small and put it at the bottom of a soup pot cut a knuckle of veal into pieces and put in and an old fowl cut in pieces put three blades of mace 
four onions six heads of celery two turnips one carrot a bundle of sweet herbs washed clean put in half a pint of water and cover it close and sweat it gently for half an hour but be careful it don't burn for that will spoil it then pour in boiling water enough to cover it and let it stew till all the goodness is out then strain it into a clean pan and let it stand half an hour to settle then skim it well and pour it off the settlings into a clean pan boil half a pint of cream and pour upon the crumbs of a halfpenny roll and let it soak well take half a pound of almonds blanch them and beat them in a marble mortar as fine as you can putting now and then a little cream to keep them from oiling take the yolks of six hard eggs and the roll and cream and put to the almonds and beat them up together in your broth rub it through a fine hair sieve or cloth till all the goodness is rubbed through and put it in a stew pan keep stirring it till it boils and skim off the froth as it rises season with salt and then pour it into your tureen with three slices of french roll crisped before the fire to make mutton broth take a neck of mutton about six pounds cut it into two boil the scrag in a gallon of water skim it well then put in a little bundle of sweet herbs an onion and a good crust of bread let it boil an hour then put in the other part of the mutton a turnip or two some dried marigolds a few scythes chopped fine a little parsley chopped small then put these in about a quarter of an hour before your broth is enough season it with salt or you may put in a quarter of a pound of barley or rice at first some love it thickened with oatmeal and some with bread and some love it seasoned with mace instead of sweet herbs and onion all this is fancy and different palates if you boil turnips for sauce do not boil all in the pot it makes the broth too strong of them but boil them in a saucepan beef broth take a leg of beef crack the bone in two or three parts wash it clean put it into a pot with a gallon of water skim it well then put in two or three blades of mace a little bundle of parsley and a good crust of bread let it boil till the beef is quite tender and the sinews toast some bread and cut it in dice and put it in your tureen lay in the meat and pour the soup in to make scotch barley broth take a leg of beef chop it all to pieces boil it in three gallons of water with a piece of carrot and a crust of bread till it is half boiled away then strain it off and put it into the pot again with half a pound of barley four or five heads of celery washed clean and cut small a large onion a bundle of sweet herbs a little parsley chopped small and a few marigolds let this boil an hour take a cock or a large fowl clean picked and washed and put into the pot boil it till the broth is quite good then season with salt and send it to table with the fowl in the middle this broth is very good without the fowl take out the onion and sweet herbs before you send it to table some make this broth with a sheep's head instead of a leg of beef and it is very good but you must chop the head all to pieces the thick flank about six pounds to six quarts of water makes good broth then put the barley in with the meat first skim it well boil it an hour very softly then put in the above ingredients with turnips and carrots clean scraped and pared and cut in little pieces boil all together softly till the broth is very good then season it with salt and send it to table with the beef in the middle turnips and carrots round and pour the broth over all to make hodge podge take a piece of beef fat and lean together 
about a pound of veal, a pound of scrag of mutton, cut all into little pieces, set it on the fire with two quarts of water, an ounce of barley, an onion, a little bundle of sweet herbs, three or four heads of celery washed clean and cut small, a little mace, two or three cloves, some whole pepper, tied all in a muslin rag, and put to the meat three turnips pared and cut in two, a large carrot scraped clean and cut in six pieces, a little lettuce cut small, put all in the pot and cover it close. Let it stew very softly over a slow fire five or six hours. Take out the spice, sweet herbs and onion, and pour all into a soup dish and send it to table. First season it with salt. Half a pint of green peas, when it is the season for them, is very good. If you let this boil fast, it will waste too much. Therefore, you cannot do it too slow, if it does but simmer. All other stews you have in the foregoing chapter, and soups in the chapter of Lent. Hodgepodge of Mutton Take a neck of mutton of about six pounds, cut about two pounds of the best end whole, cut the rest into chops, put them into a stew pan or little pot. Put in two large onions whole, two heads of celery, four turnips whole, a carrot cut in pieces, a small savoy or cabbage, all washed clean. Stew it gently till you have drawn all the gravy out, but be sure it don't burn. Put in about three quarts of boiling water, and let it stew gently for three hours. Put in a spoonful of browning, and season it with salt. Skim off all the fat clean. Put your meat in a soup dish, and put the herbs over, and pour the soup over all. Garnish with toasted sippets. You put only the best end, and leave out the chops. Partridge Soup Take two large old partridges, skin them, and cut them into pieces with three or four slices of ham, a little celery, and three large onions cut in slices. Fry them in butter till they are brown. Be sure not to burn them. Then put them to three quarts of boiling water with a few peppercorns and a little salt. Stew it very gently for two hours, then strain it and put some stewed celery and fried bread. Serve it up hot in a tureen. To make portable soup. Take two legs of beef of about 50 pounds weight. Take off all the skin and fat as well as you can. Then take all the meat and sinews clean from the bones. Which meat put into a large pot and put it to eight or nine gallons of soft water. First make it boil, then put in twelve anchovies, an ounce of mace, a quarter of an ounce of cloves, an ounce of whole pepper, black and white together, six large onions peeled and cut in two, a little bundle of thyme, sweet marjoram and winter savoury, the dry hard crust of a tuppenny loaf, stir it all together and cover it close. Lay a weight on the cover to keep it close down, and let it boil softly for eight or nine hours, then uncover it and stir it together. Cover it close again, and let it boil till it is a very rich good jelly, which you will know by taking a little out now and then, and letting it cool. When you think it is a thick jelly, take it off, strain it through a coarse hair bag, and press it hard. Then strain it through a hair sieve into a large earthen pan. When it is quite cold, take off the scum and fat, and take the fine jelly clear from the settlings at bottom, and then put the jelly into a large, deep, well-tinned stew pan. Set it over a stove with a slow fire. Keep stirring it often, and take great care it neither sticks to the pan or burns. When you find the jelly very stiff and thick, as it will be in lumps about the pan, take it out and put it into large deep china cups or well-glazed earthenware. Fill the pan two-thirds full of water, and when the water boils, set it in your cups. 
be sure no water gets into the cups and keep the water boiling softly all the time till you find the jelly is like a stiff glue take out the cups and when they are cool turn out the glue into a coarse new flannel let it lay eight or nine hours keeping it in a dry warm place turning every two hours and then put it into the sun till it is quite hard and dry put it into tin boxes with a piece of writing paper between each piece and keep them in a dry place when you use it pour boiling water on it and stir it all the time till it is melted season with salt to your palate a piece as big as a large walnut will make a pint of water very rich but as to that you are to make it as good as you please if for soup fry a french roll and lay it in the middle of the dish and when the glue is dissolved in the water give it a boil and pour it into the dish if you choose it for a change you may boil either rice or barley vermicelli celery cut small or truffles or morels but let them be very tenderly boiled in the water before you stir in the glue and then give it a boil altogether you may when you would have it very fine add forcemeat balls coxcombs or a pallet boiled very tender and cut into little bits but it will be very rich and good without any of these ingredients if for gravy pour the boiling water on to what quantity you think proper and when it is dissolved add what ingredients you please as in other sauces this is only in the room of a rich good gravy you may make your sauce either weak or strong by adding more or less or you may make it of veal or of mutton the same way rules to be observed in making soups or broths first take great care the pots or saucepans and covers be very clean and free from all grease and sand and that they be well tinned for fear of giving the broths and soups any brassy taste if you have time to stew as softly as you can it will both have a finer flavour and the meat will be tenderer but then observe when you make soups or broths for present use if it is to be done softly do not put much more water than you intend to have soup or broth and if you have the convenience of an earthen pan or pipkin set it on wood embers till it boils then skim it and put in your seasoning cover it close and set it on embers so that it may do very softly for some time and both the meat and broths will be delicious you must observe in all broths and soups that one thing does not taste more than another but that the taste be equal and it has a fine agreeable relish according to what you design it for and you must be sure that all the greens and herbs you put in be cleaned washed and picked End of section 16. Section 17 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 7 of Puddings An Oat Pudding to Bake. Of oats decorticated, take two pounds, and new milk enough to drown it. Eight ounces of raisins of the sun stoned an equal quantity of currants neatly picked a pound of sweet suet finely shred six new-laid eggs well beat season with nutmeg beaten ginger and salt mix it all well together it will make a better pudding than rice to make a calf's foot pudding take of calf's feet one pound minced very fine the fat and the brown to be taken out a pound and a half of suet pick off all the skin and shred it small six eggs but half the whites beat them well the crumb of a halfpenny roll grated a pound of currants clean picked and washed and rubbed in a cloth milk 
as much as will moisten it with the eggs a handful of flour a little salt nutmeg and sugar to season it to your taste boil it nine hours with your meat when it is done lay it in your dish and pour melted butter over it it is very good with white wine and sugar in the butter to make a pith pudding take a quantity of the pith of an ox and let it lie all night in water to soak out the blood the next morning strip it out of the skin and beat it with the back of a spoon in orange water till it is as fine as pap then take three pints of thick cream and boil in it two or three blades of mace a nutmeg quartered a stick of cinnamon then take half a pound of the best jordan almonds blanched in cold water then beat them with a little of the cream and as it dries put in more cream and when they are all beaten strain the cream from them to the pith then take the yolks of ten eggs the white of but two beat them very well and put them to the ingredients take a spoonful of grated bread or naples biscuit mingle all these together with half a pound of fine sugar and the marrow of four large bones and a little salt fill them in a small ox or hog's guts or bake in a dish with a puff paste under it and round the edges to make a marrow pudding take a quart of cream or milk and a quarter of a pound of naples biscuit put them on the fire in a stew pan and boil them up then take the yolks of eight eggs the whites of four beat up very fine a little moist sugar some marrow chopped mix all well together and put them on the fire keep it stirring till it is thick then take it off the fire and keep stirring it till it is cold when it is almost cold put in a small glass of brandy one of sack and a spoonful of orange flower water then have ready your dish rimmed with puff paste put your stuff in sprinkle some currants that have been well washed in cold water and rubbed clean in a cloth some marrow cut in slices and some candied lemon orange and citron cut in shreds and send it to the oven three quarters of an hour will bake it send it up hot a boiled suet pudding take a quart of milk four spoonfuls of flour a pound of suet shred small four eggs one spoonful of beaten ginger a teaspoonful of salt mix the eggs and flour with a pint of the milk very thick and with the seasoning mix in the rest of the milk and suet let your batter be pretty thick and boil it two hours a boiled plum pudding take a pound of suet cut in little pieces not too fine a pound of currants and a pound of raisins stoned eight eggs half the whites half a nutmeg grated and a teaspoonful of beaten ginger a pound of flour a pint of milk beat the eggs first then half the milk beat them together and by degrees stir in the flour then the suet spice and fruit and as much milk as will mix it well together very thick boil it five hours a hunting pudding take ten eggs the whites of six and all the yolks beat them up well with half a pint of cream six spoonfuls of flour one pound of beef suet chopped small a pound of currants well washed and picked a pound of jar raisins stoned and chopped small two ounces of candied citron orange and lemon shred fine put two ounces of fine sugar a spoonful of rose water and a glass of brandy half a nutmeg grated mix all well together tie it up in a cloth and boil it four hours be sure to put it in when the water boils and kept it boiling all the time turn it out into a dish and garnish with powder sugar a yorkshire pudding take a quart of milk and five eggs beat them up well together and mix them with flour till it is of a good pancake batter and very smooth 
put in a little salt some grated nutmeg and ginger butter a dripping or frying pan and put it under a piece of beef or mutton or a loin of veal that is roasting and then put in your batter and when the top side is brown cut it in square pieces and turn it and then let the underside be brown then put it in a hot dish as clean of fat as you can and send it to table hot vermicelli pudding take a quarter of a pound of vermicelli and boil it in a pint of milk till it is tender with a stick of cinnamon then take out the cinnamon and put in half a pint of cream a quarter of a pound of butter melted a quarter of a pound of sugar with the yolks of four eggs well beat put it in a dish with or without paste round the rim and bake it three quarters of an hour or if you like it for variety you may add half a pound of currants clean washed and picked or a handful of marrow chopped fine or both a steak pudding make a good crust with suet shred fine with flour and mix it up with cold water season it with a little salt and make a pretty stiff crust about two pounds of suet to a quarter of a peck of flour let your steaks be either beef or mutton well seasoned with pepper and salt make it up as you do an apple pudding tie it in a cloth and put it into the water boiling if it be a large pudding it will take five hours if a small one three hours this is the best crust for an apple pudding pigeons eat well this way suet dumplings take a pint of milk four eggs a pound of suet and a pound of currants two teaspoonfuls of salt three of ginger first take half the milk and mix it like a thick batter then put the eggs and the salt and ginger then the rest of the milk by degrees with the suet and currants and flour to make it like a light paste when the water boils make them in rolls as big as a large turkey's egg with a little flour then flat them and throw them into boiling water move them softly that they do not stick together keep the water boiling all the time and half an hour will boil them an oxford pudding a quarter of a pound of biscuit grated a quarter of a pound of currants clean washed and picked a quarter of a pound of suet shred small half a large spoonful of powder sugar a very little salt and some grated nutmeg mix all well together then take two yolks of eggs and make it up in balls as big as a turkey's egg fry them in fresh butter of a fine light brown for sauce have melted butter and sugar with a little sack or white wine you must mind to keep the pan shaking about that they may be all of a fine light brown all other puddings you have in the lent chapter rules to be observed in making puddings etc in boiled puddings take great care the bag or cloth be very clean not soapy but dipped in hot water and well floured if a bread pudding tie it loose if a batter pudding tie it close and be sure the water boils when you put the pudding in and you should move the puddings in the pot now and then for fear they stick when you make a batter pudding first mix the flour well with a little milk then put in the ingredients by degrees and it will be smooth and not have lumps but for a plain batter pudding the best way is to strain it through a coarse hair sieve that it may neither have lumps nor the treadles of the eggs and for all other puddings strain the eggs when they are beat if you boil them in wooden bowls or china dishes butter the inside before you put in your batter and for all baked puddings butter the pan or dish before the pudding is put in End of section 17。section 18 of the art of cookery made plain and easy by Hannah Glass。this librivox recording is in the public domain。
Chapter Eight of Pies to make a very fine sweet lamb or veal pie season your lamb with salt and pepper cloves mace and nutmeg all beat fine to your palate cut your lamb or veal into little pieces make a good puff paste crust lay it into your dish then lay in your meat strew on it some stoned raisins and currants clean washed and some sugar then lay on it some forcemeat balls made sweet, and in the summer some artichoke bottoms boiled, and scalded grapes in the winter. Boiled Spanish potatoes cut in pieces, candied citron, candied orange and lemon peel, and three or four blades of mace. Put butter on the top, close up your pie and bake it. Have ready against it comes out of the oven a cordial made thus take a pint of white wine and mix in the yolks of three eggs stir it well together over the fire one way all the time till it is thick then take it off stir in sugar enough to sweeten it and squeeze in the juice of a lemon pour it hot into your pie and close it up again send it hot to table a savoury veal pie take a breast of veal cut it into pieces season it with pepper and salt lay it all into your crust boil six or eight eggs hard take only the yolks put them into the pie here and there fill your dish almost full of water put on the lid and bake it well or you may put some forcemeat balls in to make a savoury lamb or veal pie make a good puff paste crust cut your meat into pieces season it to your palate with pepper salt mace cloves and nutmeg finely beat lay it into your crust with a few lamb stones and sweetbread seasoned as your meat also some oysters and forcemeat balls hard yolks of eggs and the tops of asparagus two inches long first boiled green put butter all over the pie put on the lid and set it in a quick oven an hour and a half and then have ready the liquor made thus take a pint of gravy the oyster liquor a gill of red wine and a little grated nutmeg mix all together with the yolks of two or three eggs beat and keep it stirring one way all the time when it boils pour it into your pie put on the lid again send it hot to table you must make liquor according to your pie to make a calf's foot pie first set your calf's feet on in a saucepan in three quarts of water with three or four blades of mace let them boil softly till there is about a pint and a half then take out your feet strain the liquor and make a good crust cover your dish then pick off the flesh from the bones lay half in the dish strew half a pound of currants clean washed and picked over and half a pound of raisins stoned lay on the rest of the meat then skim the liquor sweeten it to the palate and put in half a pint of white wine pour it into the dish put on your lid and bake it an hour and a half to make an olive pie make your crust ready then take the thin collops of the best end of a leg of veal as many as you think will fill your pie hack them with the back of a knife and season them with salt pepper cloves and mace wash over your collops with a bunch of feathers dipped in eggs and have in readiness a good handful of sweet herbs shred small the herbs must be thyme parsley and spinach the yolks of eight hard eggs minced and a few oysters parboiled and chopped some beef suet shred very fine mix these together and strew them over your collops then sprinkle a little orange flower water over them roll the collops up very close and lay them in your pie strewing the seasoning over what is left put butter on the top and close your pie when it comes out of the oven have ready some gravy hot with one anchovy dissolved in the gravy 
pour it in boiling hot you may put in artichoke bottoms and chestnuts if you please you may leave out the orange flower water if you do not like it to season an egg pie boil twelve eggs hard and shred them with one pound of beef suet or marrow shred fine season them with a little cinnamon and nutmeg beat fine one pound of currants clean washed and picked two or three spoonfuls of cream and a little sack and rose water mixed all together and fill the pie when it is baked stir in half a pound of fresh butter and the juice of a lemon to make a mutton pie take a loin of mutton take off the skin and fat of the inside cut it into steaks season it well with pepper and salt to your palate lay it into your crust fill it pour in as much water as will almost fill the dish then put on the crust and bake it well a beef steak pie take fine rump steaks beat them with a rolling pin then season them with pepper and salt according to your palate make a good crust lay in your steaks fill your dish then pour in as much water as will half fill the dish put on the crust and bake it well a ham pie take some cold boiled ham and slice it about half an inch thick make a good crust and thick over the dish and lay a layer of ham shake a little pepper over it then take a large young fowl clean picked gutted washed and singed put a little pepper and salt in the belly and rub a very little salt on the outside lay the fowl on the ham boil some eggs hard put in the yolks and cover all with ham then shake some pepper on the ham and put on the top crust bake it well have ready when it comes out of the oven some very rich beef gravy enough to fill the pie lay on the crust again and send it to table hot if you put two large fowls in they will make a fine pie but that is according to your company more or less the larger the pie the finer the meat eats the crust must be the same you make for a venison pasty you should pour a little strong gravy into the pie when you make it just to bake the meat and then fill it up when it comes out of the oven boil some truffles and morels and put into the pie which is a great addition and some fresh mushrooms or dried ones to make a pigeon pie make a puff paste crust cover your dish let your pigeons be very nicely picked and cleaned season them with pepper and salt and put a good piece of fine fresh butter with pepper and salt in their bellies lay them in your pan the necks gizzards livers pinions and hearts lay between with the yolk of a hard egg and beefsteak in the middle put as much water as will almost fill the dish lay on the top crust and bake it well this is the best way to make pigeon pie but the french fill the pigeons with a very high forcemeat and lay forcemeat balls round the inside with asparagus tops artichoke bottoms mushrooms truffles and morels and season high but that is according to different palates to make a giblet pie take two pairs of giblets nicely cleaned put all but the livers into a saucepan with two quarts of water twenty corns of whole pepper three blades of mace a bundle of sweet herbs and a large onion cover them close and let them stew very softly till they are quite tender then have a good crust ready cover your dish lay a fine rump steak at the bottom seasoned with pepper and salt then lay in your giblets with the livers and strain the liquor they were stewed in season it with salt and pour into your pie put on the lid and bake it an hour and a half to make a duck pie make a puff paste crust take two ducks scold them and make them very clean cut off the feet the pinions the neck and head 
all clean picked and scalded with the gizzards livers and hearts pick out all the fat of the inside lay a crust all over the dish season the ducks with pepper and salt inside and out lay them in your dish and the giblets at each end seasoned put in as much water as will almost fill the pie lay on the crust and bake it but not too much to make a chicken pie make a puff paste crust take two chickens cut them to pieces season them with pepper and salt a little beaten mace lay a forcemeat made thus round the side of the dish take half a pound of veal half a pound of suet beat them quite fine in a marble mortar with as many crumbs of bread season it with a very little pepper and salt an anchovy with the liquor cut the anchovy to pieces a little lemon peel cut very fine and shred small a very little thyme mix all together with the yolk of an egg make some into round balls about twelve the rest lay round the dish lay in one chicken over the bottom of the dish take two sweetbreads cut them into five or six pieces lay them all over season them with pepper and salt strew over them half an ounce of truffles and morels two or three artichoke bottoms cut to pieces a few coxcombs if you have them a palate boiled tender and cut to pieces then lay on the other part of the chicken put half a pint of water in and cover the pie bake it well and when it comes out of the oven fill it with good gravy lay it on the crust and send it to table to make a cheshire pork pie take a loin of pork skin it cut it into steaks season it with salt nutmeg and pepper make a good crust lay a layer of pork then a large layer of pippins pared and cored a little sugar enough to sweeten the pie then another layer of pork put in half a pint of white wine lay some butter on the top and close your pie if your pie be large it will take a pint of white wine to make a devonshire squab pie make a good crust cover the dish all over put at the bottom a layer of sliced pippins then a layer of mutton steaks cut from the loin well seasoned with pepper and salt then another layer of pippins peel some onions and slice them thin lay a layer all over the apples then a layer of mutton then pippins and onions pour in a pint of water so close your pie and bake it to make an ox cheek pie first bake your ox cheek as at other times but not too much put it in the oven overnight and then it will be ready the next day make a fine puff paste crust and let your side and top crust be thick let your dish be deep to hold a good deal of gravy cover your dish with crust then cut off all the flesh kernels and fat of the head with the palate cut in pieces cut the meat into little pieces as you do for a hash lay in the meat take an ounce of truffles and morels and throw them over the meat the yolks of six eggs boiled hard a gel of pickled mushrooms or fresh ones are better if you have them put in a good many forcemeat balls a few artichoke bottoms and asparagus tops if you have any season your pie with pepper and salt to your palate and fill the pie with the gravy it was baked in if the head be rightly seasoned when it comes out of the oven it will want very little more put on the lid and bake it when the crust is done your pie will be enough to make a shropshire pie first make a good puff paste crust then cut two rabbits to pieces with two pounds of fat pork cut into little pieces season both with pepper and salt to your liking then cover your dish with crust and lay in your rabbits mix the pork with them take the livers of the rabbits parboil them 
and beat them in a mortar with as much fat bacon a little sweet herbs and some oysters if you have them season with pepper salt and nutmeg mix it up with the yolk of an egg and make it into balls lay them here and there in your pie some artichoke bottoms cut in dice and coxcombs if you have them grate a small nutmeg over the meat then pour in half a pint of red wine and half a pint of water close your pie and bake it an hour and a half in a quick oven but not too fierce an oven to make a yorkshire christmas pie first make a good standing crust let the wall and bottom be very thick bone a turkey a goose a fowl a partridge and a pigeon season them all very well take half an ounce of mace half an ounce of nutmegs a quarter of an ounce of cloves and half an ounce of black pepper all beat fine together two large spoonfuls of salt and then mix them together open the fowls all down the back and bone them first the pigeon then the partridge cover them then the fowl then the goose and then the turkey which must be large season them all well first and lay them in the crust so as it will look only like a whole turkey then have a hair ready cased and wiped with a clean cloth cut it to pieces that is joint it season it and lay it as close as you can on one side on the other side woodcocks moor game and what sort of wild fowl you can get season them well and lay them close put at least four pounds of butter into the pie then lay on your lid which must be a very thick one and let it be well baked it must have a very hot oven and will take at least four hours this crust will take a bushel of flour in this chapter you will see how to make it these pies are often sent to london in a box as presents therefore the walls must be well built to make a goose pie half a peck of flour will make the walls of a goose pie made as in the receipts for crust raise your crust just big enough to hold a large goose first have a pickle dried tongue boiled tender enough to peel cut off the root bone a goose and a large fowl take half a quarter of an ounce of mace beat fine a large teaspoonful of beaten pepper three teaspoonfuls of salt mix all together season your fowl and goose with it then lay the fowl in the goose and tongue in the fowl and the goose in the same form as if whole put half a pound of butter on the top and lay on the lid this pie is delicious either hot or cold and will keep a great while a slice of this pie cut down across makes a pretty little side dish for supper to make a venison pasty take a neck and breast of venison bone it season it with pepper and salt according to your palate cut the breast in two or three pieces but do not cut the fat off the neck if you can help it lay in the breast and neck end first and the best end of the neck on the top that the fat may be whole make a good rich puff paste crust and rim your dish then lay in your venison put in half a pound of butter about a quarter of a pint of water then put a very thick paste over and ornament it in any form you please with leaves etc cut in paste and let it be baked three hours in a quick oven put a sheet of buttered paper over it to keep it from scorching in the meantime set on the bones of the venison in two quarts of water with two or three blades of mace an onion a little piece of crust baked crisp and brown a little whole pepper cover it close and let it boil softly over a slow fire till above half is wasted then strain it off when the pasty comes out of the oven lift up the lid and pour in the gravy when your venison is not fat enough take the fat of a loin of mutton steeped in a little rape vinegar and red wine twenty-four hours 
then lay it on the top of the venison and close your pasty it is a wrong notion of some people to think venison cannot be baked enough and will first bake it in a false crust and then bake it in the pasty by this time the fine flavour of the venison is gone no if you want it to be very tender wash it in warm milk and water dry it in clean cloths till it is very dry then rub it all over with vinegar and hang it in the air keep it as long as you think proper it will keep thus a fortnight good but be sure there be no moistness about it if there is you must dry it well and throw ginger over it and it will keep a long time when you use it just dip it in lukewarm water and dry it bake it in a quick oven if it is a large pasty it will take three hours then your venison will be tender and have all the fine flavour the shoulder makes a pretty pasty boned and made as above with the mutton fat a loin of mutton makes a fine pasty take a large fat loin of mutton let it hang four or five days then bone it leaving the meat as whole as you can lay the meat twenty-four hours in half a pint of red wine and half a pint of rape vinegar then take it out of the pickle and order it as you do a pasty and boil the bones in the same manner to fill the pasty when it comes out of the oven to make a calf's head pie cleanse your head very well and boil it till it is tender then carefully take off the flesh as whole as you can take out the eyes and slice the tongue make a good puff paste crust cover the dish lay on your meat throw over it the tongue lay the eyes cut in two at each corner season it with a very little pepper and salt pour in half a pint of the liquor it was boiled in lay a thin top crust on and bake it an hour in a quick oven in the meantime boil the bones of the head in two quarts of liquor with two or three blades of mace half a quarter of an ounce of whole pepper a large onion and a bundle of sweet herbs let it boil till there is about a pint then strain it off and add two spoonfuls of ketchup three of red wine a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour half an ounce of truffles and morels season with salt to your palate boil it and have half the brains boiled with some sage beat them and twelve leaves of sage chopped fine stir all together and give it a boil take the other part of the brains and beat them with some of the sage chopped fine a little lemon peel minced fine and half a small nutmeg grated beat it up with an egg and fry it in little cakes of a fine light brown boil six eggs hard take only the yolks when your pie comes out of the oven take off the lid lay the eggs and cakes over it and pour the sauce all over send it to table hot without the lid this is a fine dish you may put in it as many fine things as you please but it wants no more addition to make a tort first make a fine puff paste cover your dish with the crust make a good force meat thus take a pound of veal and a pound of beef suet cut them small and beat them fine in a mortar season it with a small nutmeg grated a little lemon peel shred fine a few sweet herbs not too much a little pepper and salt just enough to season it the crumb of a penny loaf rubbed fine mix it up with the yolk of an egg make one third into balls and the rest lay round the sides of the dish get two fine large veal sweetbreads cut each into four pieces two pair of lambstones each cut in two twelve coxcombs half an ounce of truffles and morels four artichoke bottoms cut each into four pieces a few asparagus tops some fresh mushrooms and some pickled put all together in your dish lay first your sweetbreads then the artichoke bottoms then the coxcombs then the truffles and morels then the asparagus 
then the mushrooms and then the forcemeat balls season the sweetbreads with pepper and salt fill your pie with water and put on the crust bake it two hours as to the fruit and fish pies you have them in the chapter for lent to make mince pies the best way take three pounds of suet shred very fine and chopped as small as possible two pounds of raisins stoned and chopped as fine as possible two pounds of currants nicely picked washed rubbed and dried at the fire half a hundred of fine pippins pared cored and chopped small half a pound of fine sugar pounded fine a quarter of an ounce of mace a quarter of an ounce of cloves two large nutmegs all beat fine put all together into a great pan and mix it well together with half a pint of brandy and half a pint of sack put it down close in a stone pot and it will keep good four months when you make your pies take a little dish something bigger than a soup plate lay a very thin crust all over it lay a thin layer of meat and then a thin layer of citron cut very thin then a layer of mincemeat and a layer of orange peel cut thin over that a little meat squeeze half the juice of a fine seville orange or lemon lay on your crust and bake it nicely these pies eat finely cold if you make them in little patties mix your meat and sweetmeats accordingly if you choose meat in your pies parboil neat's tongue peel it and chop the meat as fine as possible and mix with the rest or two pounds of the inside of a sirloin of beef boiled but you must double the quantity of fruit when you use meat tort de moy make puff paste and lay round your dish then a layer of biscuit and a layer of butter and marrow and then a layer of all sorts of sweetmeats or as many as you have and so do till your dish is full then boil a quart of cream and thicken it with four eggs and a spoonful of orange flower water sweeten it with sugar to your palate and pour over the rest half an hour will bake it to make orange or lemon tarts take six large lemons and rub them very well with salt and put them in water for two days with a handful of salt in it then change them into fresh water every day without salt for a fortnight then boil them for two or three hours till they are tender then cut them into half quarters and then cut them three corner ways as thin as you can take six pippins pared cored and quartered and a pint of fair water let them boil till the pippins break put the liquor to your orange or lemon and half the pulp of the pippins well broken and a pound of sugar boil these together a quarter of an hour then put it in a galley pot and squeeze an orange in it if it be a lemon tart squeeze a lemon two spoonfuls is enough for a tart your patty pans must be small and shallow put fine puff paste and very thin a little while will bake it just as your tarts are going into the oven with a feather or brush do them over with melted butter and then sift double refined sugar over them and this is a pretty icing on them to make different sorts of tarts if you bake in tin patties butter them and you must put a little crust all over because of the taking them out if in china or glass no crust but the top one lay fine sugar at the bottom then your plums cherries or any other sort of fruit and sugar at top then put on your lid and bake them in a slack oven mince pies must be baked in tin patties because taking them out the puff paste is best for them for sweet tarts the beaten crust is best but as you fancy you have the receipt for the crust in this chapter apple pear apricot etc make thus apples and pears pare them cut them into quarters and core them cut the quarters across again 
set them on a saucepan with just as much water as will barely cover them let them simmer on a slow fire just till the fruit is tender put a good piece of lemon peel in the water with the fruit then have your patties ready lay fine sugar at bottom then your fruit and a little sugar at top that you must put in at your discretion pour over each tart a teaspoonful of lemon juice and three teaspoonfuls of the liquor they were boiled in put on your lid and bake them in a slack oven apricots do the same way only do not use lemon as to preserved tarts only lay in your preserved fruit and put a very thin crust at top and let them be baked as little as possible but if you would make them very nice have a large patty the size you would have for your tart make your sugar crust roll it as thick as a halfpenny, then butter your patties and cover it shape your upper crust on a hollow thing on purpose the size of your patty and mark it with a marking iron for that purpose in what shape you please to be hollow and open to see the fruit through then bake your crust in a very slack oven not to discolour it but to have it crisp when the crust is cold very carefully take it out and fill it with what fruit you please lay on the lid and it is done therefore if the tart is not eat your sweetmeat is not the worse and it looks genteel paste for tarts one pound of flour three quarters of a pound of butter mix up together and beat well with a rolling pin another paste for tarts half a pound of butter half a pound of flour and half a pound of sugar mix it well together and beat it with a rolling pin well then roll it out thin puff paste take a quarter of a peck of flour rub in a pound of butter very fine make it up in a light paste with cold water just stiff enough to work it up then roll it out about as thick as a crown piece put a layer of butter all over sprinkle on a little flour double it up and roll it out again double it and roll it three times then it is fit for all sorts of pies and tarts that require a puff paste a good crust for great pies to a peck of flour add the yolks of three eggs then boil some water and put in half a pound of fried suet and a pound and a half of butter skim off the butter and suet and as much of the liquor as will make it a light good crust work it up well and roll it out a standing crust for great pies take a peck of flour and six pounds of butter boiled in a gallon of water skim it off into the flour and as little of the liquor as you can work it well up into a paste then pull it into pieces till it is cold then make it up in what form you will have it this is fit for the walls of a goose pie a cold crust to three pounds of flour rub in a pound and a half of butter break in two eggs and make it up with cold water a dripping crust take a pound and a half of beef dripping boil it in water strain it then let it stand to be cold and take off the hard fat scrape it boil it so four or five times then work it well up into three pounds of flour as fine as you can and make it up into paste with cold water it makes a very fine crust a crust for custards take half a pound of flour six ounces of butter the yolks of two eggs three spoonfuls of cream mix them together and let them stand a quarter of an hour then work it up and down and roll it very thin paste for a crackling crust blanch four handfuls of almonds and throw them into water then dry them in a cloth and pound them in a mortar very fine with a little orange flower water and the white of an egg when they are well pounded pass them through a coarse hair sieve 
to clear them from all the lumps or clods then spread it on a dish till it is very pliable let it stand for a while then roll out a piece for the under crust and dry it in the oven on the pie pan while other pastry works are making as knots ciphers etc for garnishing your pies End of section 18. Section 19 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 9, Part 1 For Lent or a Fast Dinner. A number of good dishes which you may make use of. For a table at any other time a peas soup boil a quart of split peas in a gallon of water when they are quite soft put in half a red herring or two anchovies a good deal of whole pepper black and white two or three blades of mace four or five cloves a bundle of sweet herbs a large onion and the green tops of a bunch of celery a good bundle of dried mint cover them close and let them boil softly till there is about two quarts then strain it off and have ready the white part of the celery washed clean and cut small and stewed tender in a quart of water some spinach picked and washed clean put to the celery let them stew till the water is quite wasted and put it to your soup take a french roll take out the crumb fry the crust brown in a little fresh butter take some spinach stew it in a little butter after it is boiled and fill the roll take the crumb cut it in pieces beat it in a mortar with a raw egg a little spinach and a little sorrel a little beaten mace a little nutmeg and an anchovy then mix it up with your hand and roll them into balls with a little flour and cut some bread into dice and fry them crisp pour your soup into your dish put in the balls and bread and the roll in the middle garnish your dish with spinach if it wants salt you must season it to your palate rub in some dried mint a green peas soup Take a quart of old green peas and boil them till they are quite tender as pap in a quart of water. Then strain them through a sieve and boil a quart of the young peas in that water. In the meantime, put the old peas into a sieve, pour half a pound of melted butter over them and strain them through the sieve with the back of a spoon till you have got all the pulp. When the young peas are boiled enough, add the pulp and butter to the young peas and liquor stir them together till they are smooth and season with pepper and salt you may fry a french roll and let it swim in the dish if you like it boil a bundle of mint in the peas another green peas soup take a quart of green peas boil them in a gallon of water with a bundle of mint and a few sweet herbs mace cloves and whole pepper till they are tender then strain them liquor and all through a coarse sieve till the pulp is strained put this liquor into a saucepan put to it four heads of celery clean washed and cut small a handful of spinach clean washed and cut small a lettuce cut small a fine leek cut small a quart of green peas a little salt cover them and let them boil very softly till there is about two quarts and that the celery is tender then send it to table just before you send up your soup put in half a pint of spinach juice into it but don't let it boil after soup meagre take half a pound of butter put it into a deep stew pan shake it about and let it stand till it is done making a noise then have ready six middling onions peeled and cut small throw them in and shake them about take a bunch of celery clean washed and picked 
cut it in pieces half as long as your finger a large handful of spinach clean washed and picked a good lettuce clean washed if you have it and cut small a little bundle of parsley chopped fine shake all this well together in the pan for a quarter of an hour then shake in a little flour stir all together and pour into the stew pan two quarts of boiling water take a handful of dry hard crust throw in a teaspoonful of beaten pepper three blades of mace beat fine stir all together and let it boil softly for half an hour then take it off the fire and beat up the yolks of two eggs and stir in and one spoonful of vinegar pour it into the soup dish and send it to table if you have any green peas boil half a pint in the soup for a change to make an onion soup take half a pound of butter put it into a stew pan on the fire let it all melt and boil it till it has done making any noise then have ready ten or a dozen middling onions peeled and cut small throw them into the butter and let them fry a quarter of an hour then shake in a little flour and stir them round shake your pan and let them do a few minutes longer then pour in a quart or three pints of boiling water stir them round take a good piece of upper crust the stalest bread you have about as big as the top of a penny loaf cut small and throw it in season with salt to your palate let it boil ten minutes stirring it often then take it off the fire and have ready the yolks of two eggs beat fine with half a spoonful of vinegar mix some of the soup with them then stir it into your soup and mix it well and pour it into your dish this is a delicious dish to make an eel soup take eels according to the quantity of soup you would make a pound of eels will make a pint of good soup so to every pound of eels put a quart of water a crust of bread two or three blades of mace a little whole pepper an onion and a bundle of sweet herbs cover them close and let them boil till half the liquor is wasted then strain it and toast some bread cut it small lay the bread into the dish and pour in your soup if you have a stew hole set the dish over it for a minute and send it to table if you find your soup not rich enough you must let it boil till it is as strong as you would have it you may make this soup as rich and good as if it was meat you may add a piece of carrot to brown it to make a crawfish soup take a carp a large eel half a thornback cleanse and wash them clean put them into a saucepan or little pot put to them a gallon of water the crust of a penny loaf skim them well season it with mace cloves whole pepper black and white an onion a bundle of sweet herbs some parsley a piece of ginger let them boil by themselves close covered then take the tails of half a hundred crawfish pick out the bag and all the woolly parts that are about them put them into a saucepan with two quarts of water a little salt a bundle of sweet herbs let them stew softly and when they are ready to boil take out the tails and beat all the other part of the crawfish with the shells and boil in the liquor the tails you took out with a blade of mace till it comes to about a pint strain it through a clean sieve and add it to the fish a boiling let all boil softly till there is about three quarts then strain it off through a coarse sieve put it into your pot again and if it wants salt you must put some in and the tails of the crawfish beat the live spawn of a hen lobster very fine and put in to give it colour take a french roll and fry it crisp and add to it let them stew all together for a quarter of an hour you may stew a carp with them pour your soup into your dish the roll swimming in the middle 
when you have a carp there should be a roll on each side garnish the dish with crawfish if your crawfish will not lie on the sides of your dish make a little paste and lay round the rim and lay the fish on that all round the dish take care that your soup be well seasoned but not too high to make a mussel soup get a hundred of mussels wash them very clean put them into a stew pan cover them close let them stew till they open then pick them out of their shells strain the liquor through a fine lawn sieve to your mussels and pick the beard or crab out if any take a dozen crawfish beat them to mash with a dozen of almonds blanched and beat fine then take a small parsnip and a carrot scraped and cut in thin slices fry them brown with a little butter then take two pounds of any fresh fish and boil in a gallon of water with a bundle of sweet herbs a large onion stuck with cloves whole pepper black and white a little parsley a little piece of horseradish and salt the mussel liquor the crawfish and almonds let them boil till half is wasted then strain them through a sieve put the soup into a saucepan put in twenty of the mussels a few mushrooms and truffles cut small and a leek washed and cut very small take two french rolls take out the crumb fry it brown cut it into little pieces put it into the soup let it boil all together for a quarter of an hour with the fried carrot and parsnip in the meanwhile take the crust of the rolls fried crisp take half a hundred of the mussels a quarter of a pound of butter a spoonful of water shake in a little flour set them on the fire keeping the saucepan shaking all the time till the butter is melted season it with pepper and salt beat the yolks of three eggs put them in stir them all the time for fear of curdling grate a little nutmeg when it is thick and fine fill the rolls pour your soup into the dish put in the rolls and lay the rest of the mussels round the rim of the dish to make a skate or thornback soup take two pounds of skate or thornback skin it and boil it in six quarts of water when it is enough take it up pick off the flesh and lay it by put in the bones again and about two pounds of any fresh fish a very little piece of lemon peel a bundle of sweet herbs whole pepper two or three blades of mace a little piece of horseradish the crust of a penny loaf a little parsley cover it close and let it boil till there is about two quarts then strain it off and add an ounce of vermicelli set it on the fire and let it boil softly in the meantime take a french roll cut a little hole in the top take out the crumb fry the crust brown in butter take the flesh off the fish you laid by cut it into little pieces put it into a saucepan with two or three spoonfuls of the soup shake in a little flour put in a piece of butter a little pepper and salt shake them together in the saucepan over the fire till it is quite thick then fill the roll with it pour your soup into your dish let the roll swim in the middle and send it to table to make an oyster soup your stock must be made of any sort of fish the place affords let there be about two quarts take a pint of oysters beard them put them into a saucepan strain the liquor let them stew two or three minutes in their own liquor then take the hard parts of the oyster and beat them in a mortar with the yolks of four hard eggs mix them with some of the soup put them with the other part of the oysters and liquor into a saucepan a little nutmeg pepper and salt stir them well together and let it boil a quarter of an hour dish it up and send it to table to make an almond soup take a quart of almonds blanch them and beat them in a marble mortar with the yolks of twelve hard eggs till they are a fine paste 
mix them by degrees with two quarts of new milk a quart of cream a quarter of a pound of double refined sugar beat fine stir all well together when it is well mixed set it over a slow fire and keep it stirring quick all the while till you find it is thick enough then pour it into your dish and send it to table if you be not very careful it will curdle to make a rice soup take two quarts of water a pound of rice a little cinnamon cover it close and let it simmer very softly till the rice is quite tender take out the cinnamon then sweeten it to your palate grate half a nutmeg and let it stand till it is cold then beat up the yolks of three eggs with half a pint of white wine mix them very well then stir them into the rice set them on a slow fire and keep stirring all the time for fear of curdling when it is of a good thickness and boils take it up keep stirring it till you put it into your dish to make a barley soup take a gallon of water half a pound of barley a blade or two of mace a large crust of bread a little lemon peel let it boil till it comes to two quarts then add half a pint of white wine and sweeten to your palate to make a turnip soup take a gallon of water and a bunch of turnips pare them save three or four out put the rest into the water with half an ounce of whole pepper an onion stuck with cloves a blade of mace half a nutmeg bruised a little bundle of sweet herbs and a large crust of bread let these boil an hour pretty fast then strain it through a sieve squeezing the turnips through wash and cut a bunch of celery very small set it on in the liquor over the fire cover it close and let it stew in the meantime cut the turnips you saved into dice and two or three small carrots clean scraped and cut in little pieces put half these turnips and carrots into the pot with the celery and the other half fry brown in fresh butter you must flour them first and two or three onions peeled cut in thin slices and fried brown then put them all into the soup with an ounce of vermicelli let your soup boil softly till the celery is quite tender and your soup is good season it with salt to your palate to make an egg soup beat the yolks of two eggs in your dish with a piece of butter as big as a hen's egg take a tea kettle of boiling water in one hand and a spoon in the other pour in about a quart by degrees then keep stirring it all the time well till the eggs are well mixed and the butter melted then pour it into a saucepan and keep stirring it all the time till it begins to simmer take it off the fire and pour it between two vessels out of one into the other till it is quite smooth and has a great froth set it on the fire again keep stirring it till it is quite hot then pour it into the soup dish and send it to table hot to make peas porridge take a quart of green peas put to them a quart of water a bundle of dried mint and a little salt let them boil till the peas are quite tender then put in some beaten pepper a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour stir it all together and let it boil a few minutes then add two quarts of milk let it boil a quarter of an hour take out the mint and serve it up to make a white pot take two quarts of new milk eight eggs and half the whites beat up with a little rose water a nutmeg a quarter of a pound of sugar cut a penny loaf in very thin slices and pour your milk and eggs over put a little bit of sweet butter on the top bake it in a slow oven half an hour to make a rice white pot boil a pound of rice in two quarts of new milk till it is tender and thick beat it in a mortar with a quarter of a pound of sweet almonds blanched 
then boil two quarts of cream with a few crumbs of white bread and two or three blades of mace mix it all with eight eggs a little rose water and sweeten to your taste cut some candied orange and citron peels thin and lay it in it must be put into a slow oven to make rice milk take half a pound of rice boil it in a quart of water with a little cinnamon let it boil till the water is all wasted take great care it does not burn then add three pints of milk and the yolk of an egg beat up keep it stirring and when it boils take it up sweeten to your palate to make an orange fool take the juice of six oranges and six eggs well beaten a pint of cream a quarter of a pound of sugar a little cinnamon and nutmeg mix all together and keep stirring over a slow fire till it is thick then put in a little piece of butter and keep stirring till cold and dish it up to make a westminster fool take a penny loaf cut it into thin slices wet them with sack lay them in the bottom of a dish take a quart of cream beat up six eggs two spoonfuls of rose water a blade of mace and some grated nutmeg sweeten to your taste put all this into a saucepan and keep stirring all the time over a slow fire for fear of curdling when it begins to be thick pour it into the dish over the bread let it stand till it is cold and serve it up to make a gooseberry fool take two quarts of gooseberries set them on the fire in about a quart of water when they begin to simmer turn yellow and begin to plump throw them into a cullender to drain the water out then with the back of a spoon carefully squeeze the pulp throw the sieve into a dish make them pretty sweet and let them stand till they are cold in the meantime take two quarts of new milk and the yolks of four eggs beat up with a little grated nutmeg stir it softly over a slow fire when it begins to simmer take it off and by degrees stir it into the gooseberries let it stand till it is cold and serve it up if you make it with cream you need not put any eggs in and if it is not thick enough it is only boiling more gooseberries but that you must do as you think proper to make firmity take a quart of ready boiled wheat two quarts of milk a quarter of a pound of currants clean picked and washed stir these together and boil them beat up the yolks of three or four eggs a little nutmeg with two or three spoonfuls of milk and add to the wheat stir them together for a few minutes then sweeten to your palate and send it to table to make plum porridge or barley gruel take a gallon of water half a pound of barley a quarter of a pound of raisins clean washed a quarter of a pound of currants clean washed and picked boil these till above half the water is wasted with two or three blades of mace then sweeten it to your palate and add half a pint of white wine to make buttered wheat put your wheat into a saucepan when it is hot stir in a good piece of butter a little grated nutmeg and sweeten it to your palate to make plum gruel take two quarts of water two large spoonfuls of oatmeal stir it together a blade or two of mace a little piece of lemon peel boil it for five or six minutes take care it do not boil over then strain it off and put it into the saucepan again with half a pound of currants clean washed and picked let them boil about ten minutes add a glass of white wine a little grated nutmeg and sweeten to your palate to make a flour hasty pudding take a quart of milk and four bay leaves set it on the fire to boil beat up the yolks of two eggs and stir in a little salt take two or three spoonfuls of milk 
and beat up with your eggs and stir in your milk then with a wooden spoon in one hand and the flour in the other stir it in till it is of a good thickness but not too thick let it boil and keep it stirring then pour it into a dish and stick pieces of butter here and there you may omit the egg if you do not like it but it is a great addition to the pudding and a little piece of butter stirred in the milk makes it eat short and fine take out the bay leaves before you put in the flour to make an oatmeal hasty pudding take a quart of water set it on to boil put in a piece of butter and some salt when it boils stir in the oatmeal as you do the flour till it is of a good thickness let it boil a few minutes pour it into your dish and stick pieces of butter in it or eat with wine and sugar or ale and sugar or cream or new milk this is best made with scotch oatmeal to make an excellent sack posset beat fifteen eggs whites and yolks very well and strain them then put three quarters of a pound of white sugar into a pint of canary and mix it with your eggs in a basin set it over a chafing dish of coals and keep continually stirring it till it is scalding hot in the meantime grate some nutmeg in a quart of milk and boil it then pour it into your eggs and wine they being scalding hot hold your hand very high as you pour it and somebody stirring it all the time you are pouring in the milk then take it off the chafing dish set it before the fire half an hour and serve it up to make another sack posset take a quart of new milk four naples biscuits crumble them and when the milk boils throw them in just give it one boil take it off grate in some nutmeg and sweeten to your palate then pour in half a pint of sack stirring it all the time and serve it up you may crumble white bread instead of biscuit or make it thus boil a quart of cream or new milk with the yolks of two eggs first take a french roll and cut it as thin as possibly you can in little pieces lay it in the dish you intend for the posset when the milk boils which you must keep stirring all the time pour it over the bread and stir it together cover it close then take a pint of canary a quarter of a pound of sugar and grate in some nutmeg when it boils pour it into the milk stirring it all the time and serve it up to make a fine hasty pudding break an egg into fine flour and with your hand work up as much as you can into a stiff paste as is possible then mince it as small as herbs to the pot as small as if it were to be sifted then set a quart of milk a boiling and put it in the paste so cut put in a little salt a little beaten cinnamon and sugar a piece of butter as big as a walnut and stirring all one way when it is as thick as you would have it stir in such another piece of butter then pour it into your dish and stick pieces of butter here and there send it to table hot to make hasty fritters take a stew pan put in some butter and let it be hot in the meantime take half a pint of all ale not bitter and stir in some flour by degrees in a little of the ale put in a few currants or chopped apples beat them up quick and drop a large spoonful at a time all over the pan take care they do not stick together turn them with an egg slice and when they are of a fine brown lay them in a dish and throw some sugar over them garnish with orange cut into quarters end of section 19